Today is the final day of the Premier League season and yes, we have survived. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Dan. Welcome to episode 27 of our FM21 Sleeping Giant series where we are Sunderland looking to take them from League One and establish them back in the Premier League. And within two seasons we've got back-to-back -back promotions. We're at right at the end of the third season today if you're new here and uh, we secured survival. It's the last day of the season away at Chelsea and hope it's nice to have a pressure-free game, isn't it? Let's show you exactly what's happened since you was last with us. And of course, she was with us for that huge 3-1 victory over arch enemies Newcastle United. Andre Green getting two in that game, and it was like 2-1 in the first in the opening 10 minutes, wasn't it? It was a crazy game. It was 3-1 up in the 17th. Um, not any real action after that one, unfortunately, but it was a great game, especially for you Sunderland fans. Next up was Tottenham at home. Spurs not playing very well. We could have leapfrogged them in this game. It was 1-0 up. Sam Hughes in the 43rd minute. That was in stoppage time in the first half. Uh, 48th minute, rather. And um, we we were fantastic. I mean, look at these stats. We didn't deserve to lose this 2-1. Let's look at the match here. And, uh, yeah, 17 shots to their 7. We had a 1.31 XG. Unfortunately, we just couldn't find an equaliser. We thought we had an equaliser in the 85th minute through Liam Delap. But the own goal from Courtney House was rather unlucky. It was a cross shot. I think it was from Scarlett, actually. Was it, would it have been Scarlett? No, maybe Diallo. Yeah, it would have been Diallo then. Um, it was a cross shot. It ricocheted off the post. And it just... It, uh, yeah, ricocheted off the post. Then Butland seemingly punched it straight into the back of Courtney House and he had absolutely no chance it's really unfortunate the second goal was a great goal but unfortunately we just couldn't get a winner and there's not much to say about this game against Manchester United they're chasing down the league they're one point behind Liverpool going into this game and they absolutely battered us 6-0 we tried a 4-3-3 formation a new one that I just quickly whacked together to have a look at for next season try playing Liam Delap in a deep line forward roll we never got the ball up to him. It was a 6-0 defeat. We had one shot the entire game compared to United, like, 28, I think it was. So it could have been a lot more. But we were safe, and um, it doesn't really matter, does it? Hopefully it hasn't knocked us too bad for today's visit to Chelsea. So this is the Premier League then, and as you can see, confirmation with four points clear of the bottom three. Leeds United can still stay up. Them and Wolves... Have got the opportunity to survive. It's only goal difference separating, and Wolves are at home to Brighton. Brighton are eighth. They cannot get into the top seven now, so European football is over for them. And uh, who have Leeds United got? Leeds are at home to Everton, who can get into the top six from seventh. So that's rather interesting. So, top six, they're actually playing for Europa League football currently. So, uh, Leeds facing Everton with something to play for. Wolves have got Brighton, who've got nothing to play for. And uh, it's going to be rather interesting that one to see who drops out of the Premier League. Of course, Leeds started off quite well and they just kept falling and falling and falling. Now they find themselves uh, looking to survive on the final day. But let's get straight into the game against Chelsea today. And I forgot to mention, Chelsea have nothing to play for either. They're fourth. They're about 13 points clear of fifth and they can't catch third either. So it's a nothing game for them. Nothing game for us either. It'd be nice just to finish off um, without a 6-0 defeat. Hopefully we don't get hammered here today and lose our final three. But Tottenham, Ch Manchester United and Chelsea, this is why it's important that we were safe before facing Manchester United and Chelsea. This is the side we've gone. We've gone back to the more familiar 4 2 3 1 today. It is Butland, Fuchs, Hughes, House, Del Croix, Volgini, and Sibley as the holding midfielders. Green, Embleton, Hack is in. Ojo's been very, very poor in the last few games. He's got an average rating of 6.44 last few games. He's going to get a bit of a telling off at the end of the season. And Liam Delap up front. He's back in ahead of Niall Ennis. And he was back in in the last two games as well. And he hasn't uh, hasn't exactly set the world alight, has he? So Niall Ennis um, is currently looking odds on to be our number one striker next year. We're going to say, go out there and show the world you got what it takes. Why not? 6-0 defeat last time out. Everyone's expecting us to get hammered today. Let's go 
and beat Chelsea away. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? And if we do win, we can finish up in 14th, which would be lovely, wouldn't it? I mean, for us to be 15th going into today's game after the way we started the season and, and how we was even at Christmas, it is a pretty good result this season to finish where we are. 22 minutes in, though. No action for you here at Stamford Bridge. You can tell it's two teams playing for absolutely nothing and uh, it looks a fairly even game, doesn't it? First opportunity here for Chelsea. Ziyech into Ibarra. Ziyech puts the ball in. Abraham's header. Butland saves. Abraham probably should have scored there, but he didn't. Butland, I thought he sliced that kick. Del Croix, I still think he did slice that kick, actually. Green picks up the ball. He's been fantastic. He's linked with a move. We're not quite sure yet, but we're saying, the media are trying to say we're going to really struggle to keep hold of him. So it'll be interesting to see who comes in for Andre Green because he is adapted to Premier League life. Very well indeed. Good boy over the top. Embleton, if he can square this, is a good opportunity. And he didn't. He was greedy. And Kepper with the save. If he just put that across the six-yard box, Delap had a tap-in. 33 minutes gone. Still nil-nil here. Le as it stands, Leeds are going down. Wolves must be winning their game against... Was it Everton they're playing? I can't remember. Or Bright I think they're playing Brighton Wolves. And so they must be winning there. But we don't care about that. We don't need to care about it. We're going to say we're happy with the performance. I mean, it's nil-nil at Stamford Bridge. There's not been a lot of action for you guys to ponder over, but it'd be a good point if we can finish off the season with a draw here. But we're looking for more than a draw at the minute. Hack on the ball now. Much better performance from that. Oh, it's off the post. What a chance for Andre Green. It was unlucky and it hit Kepper and went wide rather than in the back of the net. Very unfortunate indeed. Folgini puts the ball in. Sam Hughes' header straight into the hands of Kepper. But if we, it'd be a great result. If we can finish here nil-nil and get a draw... Um, it's a great end to the season for us and we can just forget about that 6-0 over Manchester United. Hack clears the ball. Ampadu wins the header. Ibarra back to uh, Hermoso. Puts it ball forward to Abraham. And now there's an opportunity here for the Chelsea winger. That's a lovely tackle. That, has he given a free kick? Has he given a penalty for this? That was a superb tackle. I mean, our keepers can't look. Butland's come rushing out for this to have a, have a word with the ref. No way is that a penalty. And is it going to be a case of big clubs getting the penalties and all the right decisions with VAR? Penalty awarded. And I think that's an absolute joke. It's a good thing we're not riding on today's game because that is a shocking decision. Shocking decision. The players are still in the middle of the pitch and can't believe it. And that was never a penalty in a million years. And Ontiveros has now has an opportunity. He was the one that won the penalty somehow. And he strikes it and it goes in. I've really noticed in Football Manager recently, in Football Manager 21, that players don't even have to go to ground to get penalties anymore. They just get little nicks. That was a perfect a perfect tackle, wasn't it? No way in the world was it a penalty. It was a good penalty. He sold Butler and he put it straight down the middle. And uh, Chelsea uh, undeservedly ahead here. It is Chelsea 1, Sunderland 0. And that's very disappointing. We don't deserve it. We're going to encourage the boys. Lift their spirits a little bit and then morale. Saying, come on lads, it's unlucky. We don't deserve this. Zuma with a throw in now for Chelsea. Into Mason Mount. Back to Zuma. Ibarra now. Into Zuma again. Chelsea now starting to turn it on a little bit. Campana has had his shot blocked. And Delap looking to counter here. Delap and he's tripped. If that was in the box, that's a penalty. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a foul, ref. That's a foul, VAR. It's not even the fact ref blew it. It's the fact the VAR gave it. Unbelievable. Um, we're going to make a change here. We're going to look to bring on... We're going to take off Liam Delap because he's done nothing, is he? Another 6.5 rating. He's our top scorer, but he's really shied away at the end of this season. Uh, Embleton is going to move... A, uh, sorry, Hack's going to move to the number 10 role. Embleton off, and we're going to bring Ojo on. And uh, he needs to really buck his ideas up because he's been very poor the last few months of the season. 15 minutes remaining. Chelsea won. Sunderland nil. I, I still rather unfortunate we are losing this game because of a ridiculous VAR decision. I absolutely hate VAR, and that hasn't helped me uh, swing towards being positive about VAR because it's a nightmare. Leeds are still down. Then They must be losing now because they had 36 points. But it is all over. It's three straight defeats to end the season, a 2-1 defeat to Spurs, a 6-0 defeat to Manchester United, which is the last time I'm ever going to mention that, so I don't want to hear that one again. And a very unfortunate 1-0 defeat here at Chelsea. We've been absolutely robbed by VAR. Tell them we're pleased with the performance because... We held our own here against Chelsea, which tells me we're going to be all right next year. So, um, here we go. Look, fans are saying about Delap needs to show... Delap needs our support to recapture his best form. Exactly. I probably still will look to bring him to the club next year. But this makes me feel better. Seeing Manchester United have put seven past Arsenal. Um, and Arsenal are a better side than us by nine points. So, Man United are just goal machines, aren't they? However, they finished two points behind Liverpool 
in the Premier League table. So Liverpool champions once again. Liverpool must have won on the final day. They beat Leicester 2-0 for Bino with a penalty in the 94th and Salah in the ninth minute. Newcastle won against Fulham, which ensured they well, was never going to catch them anyway. And uh, Wolves beat Brighton 2-0 to secure survival. And Everton beat Leeds United 3-1 at Ellen Road. And so that sends Leeds United down with Fulham and Watford. So Manchester United, Man City, Chelsea, and of course Liverpool in the Champions League places. Villa and Everton occupy the tops, the other two European spaces. So they're in the Europa League and Leicester make up seventh to get into the Europa Conference League. It's been quite a good Premier League season. Three of them completely run away of it. Three of them were going for the title last day. Manchester City beat Spurs away. Uh, everyone seems to beat Spurs away this year, don't they? So... That was rather disappointing, that one. Let's get to the season review. Here we are then, end of season review. Quite long-winded these, aren't they? But I feel like it is relevant to show you it. So uh, all the new arrivals, we did bring in quite a few players here this season, didn't we? Some of these boys have only just been signed by the club. They're youngsters, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, so nothing to do with me, these ones. All the way down to Robin Hack. Who's got the little star? Because apparently he is the best of the bunch. Uh, is that financially? Yeah, financially. So it shows you the ball don't even really care about finances, not results on the football pitch. But Sev Guy's got the best average rate, and he only played that one game in the cup, but he got a 7.7 .7 rating. He was terrific in that game, and he does look a very good prospect. Del Croix was a good bit of business. I believe Del Croix and Robin Hack coming in kept us up because they really helped us uh, find a bit more balance and quality in the side. House was good as well. He came good. Uh, Falgini was decent as well. 6.88 rated. He got two goals in 28 games. Four assists for him from midfield. Sibley, the big money move from Derby County. £26 million. Played pretty much every single game. Five goals and four assists for him. I'll be looking to get a little bit more from him next season. How did they rate him? B-. minus. Um, again, happy with the wages. <laughs> uh, Giando Fuchs. Quiet quiet season for him he did all right um two assists from 37 he's a bit of a steady eddie this year ojo he got a 6.81 rating i do he got five goals and six assists so i do expect more from him next year i think he was pretty poor we got him for four hundred thousand pounds so it's a bit of a punt uh, but you know what he needs to produce more next year he's only 25 so he can rediscover his best form season results then so as you know uh finishing 15th it shows us our results look at that run of form there is that from the first was Leeds the first game? We didn't actually win a game till 29th of October, did we, against Burnley? And uh, that, oh, there's the dreaded Norwich City game where we were 3-0 up at half-time and lost 5-3. But we really hit up the form in February. Uh, we won three in a row. Brighton, Watford, Tottenham. And we drew it f home to Fulham where I thought we messed it up again. Beat Arsenal away 3-0. I completely forgot about that result. What a result that was at Arsenal. Then drew with Manchester City. And then, um, yeah, then the last few weeks, of course, was a bit tricky. But we've done enough. Well, well, we beat Newcastle. That's all we needed to do. And we've done absolutely enough to stay up in the Premier League this season. There you go. Matches to remember. The biggest win was a 4-0 win at home to Burnley. Match to remember was the win at Tottenham. I thought it would be the win at Arsenal. Uh, personally, but we've won at Tottenham and Arsenal this year, which is very good indeed. And of course, goal of the season was in that uh, 4 0 victory over Burnley. Finances then, a few greens there, a couple of reds where we dropped down a little bit. Um, most notable deal, what's this? Sponsorship? No idea. 3.34 million for a five year deal, apparently. Must be a sponsorship deal. How we lined up then? So, apparently, this is our best 11 this season. Now, I don't normally agree with these. And there's a few in there to say I don't agree with them as well. On, on the whole, probably is right. I don't know how Mitch Clark is in there when um, Del Croix's come in and did very well at left back. Falgini and Sibley, I do agree with Green, Hack, yes, Delap, Ojo. I think you've got to put him there. He was poor, in my opinion. He's got a 6.81 rating, but it was poor uh, to the last few months of the season. But he is the only one that's really played there. Lyndon Gooch didn't really play too much this season. And a club awards then. Fans player of the season. Jack Butland won that. Liam Delap won young player of the season. He's only 20 still, Delap. He's still got a lot of developing, hasn't he? Hack was signing of the season. I mean, all the fans just moaned about Hack on social media every week. And, they, and now he's signing the season. Crazy. Goals of the, uh, goal of the season was Delap. Top scorer was Delap with 16. Ojo with the most assists of six, which surprised me a little bit. But I don't think six is that much, to be honest with you. Uh, highest transfer fee was 26 million for Sibley. And the fastest goal, apparently, was 16 seconds from Ojo. Club expectations then for next season. It is to fight bravely against relegation once again. I will be looking to, yes, do that. I'd like to push towards mid-table 
this is my own little thing push towards mid table and then in our final season which will be yeah we've got two seasons left of this we'll be to try and get Sunderland in Europe and then that might push me to do a six but that's my aim is to try and get Sunderland into Europe in two seasons time now so work fire uh, work fight bravely against relegation we'll accept that i'm happy with that let's have a look then at the finances that the board have given us and we have do have this was announced before i did all that um I, before the chelsea game in fact but we have been given a, a transfer budget of 49 million pounds a wage budget of 713,000. we we're currently spending 679 so not too much room for a move uh room for maneuver i found my words in the end um we might have to sell a few players. I will look to offload a couple of players and try and bring in real quality to help us take us to the next level here in the Premier League. So, guys, if you did enjoy that video, please leave a like on there for me. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Hope you enjoyed our first season back in the Premier League. It was a bit of a roller coaster, wasn't it? But thankfully, we managed to stay up. And I think we finished, although we lost the last three games, I think we finished in a very strong position. I look forward to this transfer window to see who we can bring in let me know down in the comments as well thank you for all your comments in the last one because a few of you did let me know what you would do with this Sunderland side uh, if you didn't see that video and if you'd like to let me know what you would do based on our final standings and the objective for next season my personal one's finished mid table um, let me know who you'd bring in who you'd ship out I'd be very interested to see what you would do with this side uh, bearing in mind it is transfer window I've got a very busy week this week we're not going to bring out a video Wednesday it will be Friday this week it gives me a little bit more time to do the transfer window properly rather than rush it for wednesday when i don't have much time to work on a video for wednesday so next video will be out on friday and uh yeah see you then thanks very much for watching bye bye